Now we'll have to focus on the cost, what then constitutes cost, what then will comprise the cost that we will attribute or assign to our inventories. Okay? So paragraph 10 class would be instructive on what will comprise the cost of an inventory. It says here that the cost of inventories will comprise all costs of purchase, cost of conversion, and other costs incurred in bringing the inventories to their present location and condition. With regard to the cost of purchase class, this should not be a big problem because this is the amount that you will have to pay to the seller. Normally, this would be given in problems class. There will be no challenge as of this portion of the cost. This can easily be determined in the problem. You just look at the price and whatever is the price, that would be considered as the cost of the purchase. Most of the challenge in determining the cost of inventories class will come from the next two components of your cost, which are the cost of conversion and all other costs necessary to bring the asset to its intended location and condition. But for costs of conversion class, this would only be relevant if we are a merchandising company, if we are in the business of buying raw materials and converting it into finished goods, wherein we will still have to put the raw materials in a production process. But if you're just a merchandising firm class, as what we have mentioned in the previous videos, then cost of conversion will not be relevant. If you'll recall, if you're a merchandising firm, you're engaged in retail, all you do is sell the goods in the same state in which you bought them. No process there, no conversion will take place. So the cost of your inventories will not include cost of conversion. We will expound on cost of conversion in a short while. With regard to costs incurred in bringing the inventories to their present location and condition, just think of this class as all necessary cost. All necessary cost to bring the inventory to its present location and condition. So you will just have to keep on asking yourselves, is this cost necessary to bring the asset to its present location and condition? If the answer is yes, include that in the cost of your inventories. So even if that amount is not paid to the seller class, even if that amount is not paid to your supplier, it will still form part of your cost of inventories. There are problems class in which the only task expected from you is to identify whether a certain cost is inventoriable or not. When we say inventoriable class, we mean to say that it is to be included in the cost of the inventory. So you will be given a lot of enumeration class, 10 items, and those items will have different amounts. And the question will simply ask you, out of those costs, how much should be included as part of the cost of inventories? How much should be considered as inventoriable costs? So again, the function that is to be performed on your part class is to simply add. But of course, you will only have to add those that are considered to be inventoriable. And what are those that are inventoriable class? The cost of purchase, the cost of conversion, and all necessary cost to bring the asset to its present location and condition. So you will just have to keep on asking yourself, is this amount necessary to bring the inventory to its, to its present location and condition? If the answer is yes, include that in your computation. If the answer is no, then simply ignore it from your computation. Now, so the cost of purchase class, again, it will just be the purchase price. But if in case it is imported from another country class, in case if you will have to pay for purchase taxes, then that will be considered as part of the cost of the inventories class. If you cannot purchase the inventory without paying for these costs class, for these additional costs, then definitely that would be considered necessary and therefore that is inventoriable. So from paragraph 11 alone class, this would already give us a lot of items that can possibly be included in the enumeration in the problem I have described earlier class. First is the purchase price. Again, it should always be included. Next would be import duties and other taxes. But very important qualification class, these costs, these taxes must be irrecoverable or non-refundable. 
if there's a way for you to get back the amount that you have paid class, then that makes that amount not a necessary cost for you to spend for. Again, if you spend for something related to the acquisition of the inventories, but you would still be able to recover that cost, or you will be able to get a refund or reimbursement, then that will not be considered as a necessary cost. That would not be considered as an inventoriable cost. Another example for inventoriable costs class would be your transport, the cost to bring the asset to its present location, handling and other costs directly attributable to the acquisition of goods, materials, and services. So very important phrase here class, directly attributable costs. So directly attributable costs class can be understood in the same way as the necessary costs I have explained. If these costs are incurred to bring the asset to its present location and condition, then that should be part of the cost of your inventories. Directly attributable costs should form part of the cost of your inventories. For you to easily remember that class, we call that as DAC, D-A-C, Delta Alpha Charlie, which stands for directly attributable costs. It should form part of the cost of your inventories. Why? Because they are considered as necessary costs to bring the asset, to bring the inventory to its present location and condition.